again, Ruby, Sigrid and Agnes. Well, today in Sophie's Tom, it's a chapter all about Antal. Remember Antal? And she has a really good idea. So let's crack on. Why were those cats making all that row? Sophie asked later in the evening. Two Toms fighting, I expect, her father said. There's only one Tom. My Tom, said Sophie. Oh, all male cats are called Toms. Why were they fighting? Over a female, I should say. I bet my Tom won. I've told you before, Sophie's mother said. He's not yours. As soon as Sophie woke next morning, she jumped out of bed and went to the window. There she is, see? Looking out of the window early in the morning. It was really light outside, but she could see that there was a black cat sitting in the middle of the lawn, looking up at her window with his orange eyes. So she crept downstairs and opened the back door, stuffing her feet into a wellies. She hurried down round the lawn, but the cat had gone. Tom, Tom, she called, keeping her voice oh, Tom, Tom, she called, keeping her voice down, so as not to wake the rest of the family. And to her joy, her voice answered, yes. Oh, that's how he sounded to Sophie. Out of the shrubbery he came to be stroked. And then he followed her back into the kitchen. Have some milk, my dear, Sophie said, and she filled a saucer of milk, which Tom quickly emptied. Now, listen, Tom, said Sophie. You can't stay in the house. They'd only get angry. So I'll have to put you out again. But come back tomorrow morning and I'll give you some more milk. Understand? Yes, sob, said the cat. And it did, indeed, it seemed he did understand. For from now on, he was waiting at the back door every single morning. It's a funny thing, said Sophie's mother at breakfast one day. But we seem to be using much more milk than usual. I keep having to ask the milkman for extra. Are you boys drinking more than you ordinarily do? No, said the twins. We don't much like the stuff, do you? You know that, Mum? Sophie? Sophie, being a very truthful girl, stuck rigidly to the truth. I like milk, she said. That's partly why I'm going to be a farmer. But I'm not drinking more than usual. Now, all might have been well had not Sophie's father needed to go to Scotland on business. This meant catching an early train. And Tom was just enjoying his saucer full of milk. And Sophie was enjoying watching her when her father came into the room. So, he said, that's where all the extra milk is going. Sophie, get this animal out of here this minute. But Daddy, no buts, out. Come, Tom, said Sophie. Daddy doesn't like cats. I certainly don't like somebody else's cat drinking our milk, said her father. Cats are only good for one thing, and that's catching mice. That cat does not come into this house again, Sophie. Do you understand? Never, said Sophie. She looked so woebegone that her father relented a little. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, he said. If ever anyone sees a mouse in this house, then we'll think about having a cat. So his mother said to her later, when she'd heard all about it. And don't think you can go putting saucers of, saucers of milk out in the garden, Sophie. Cats should be given water to drink anyway. Milk just makes them fat. And that cat's fat enough already. She should have known, though, that Sophie, though small, was very determined. And we all know that, don't we? And if she'd been about early enough in the days that followed, she would have seen that Sophie had no intention whatsoever of giving Tom up. She did not let him in, and she did not give him milk. But she saw to it that there were scraps of some sort put out for his breakfast every morning. Soon it was plain that Tom had forsaken his real owners, whoever they were. Whether they were unworried by his disappearance or whether they had moved a house or gone to another district or gone abroad, no one ever knew. But the black cat had clearly adopted Sophie's garden as his territory and Sophie as his mistress. Now he even slept in the potting shed and there's a little picture of Tom asleep 
on this sack bed in the bottom shed. Sophie was delighted, of course. If only Daddy liked cats, she thought. If only we had mice in the house. But it was lovely to be continually meeting Tom in the garden. And lovely to be in bed at night and think of her black cat hunting in the black night outside. I bet Aunt Al will like you, she said to Tom. Daddy's bringing her back with him for a visit when he comes home from Scotland. She lives in the Highlands, you know. They have wild cats there. Would you like to meet a wild cat? Meow, said Tom. When Aunt Sal did arrive, apparently as fresh as, fresh as a daisy after so long on a journey, Sophie lost no time. Come, come and see Tom, Aunt Sal, she said. Aunt Sal, small and bird-like with a sharp beaky nose, looked at Sophie with her head on one side and there's a little picture of them having their conversation. Now you see, Aunt Sal. Who's Tom? Aunt Sal said. Your boyfriend? No, that's Duncan, said Tom. Tom's a cat, so said Matthew. Tom's a cat, said Ma Mark. Aunt Al turned to her great nephew. I thought you didn't like cats, she said. I don't, said Sophie's father, and it is not allowed in the house. It's a stray, said Sophie's mother. It seems to have adopted us. I've rung the police and the RSPCA, but no one has claimed it. They have, said Sophie. I have. It's my cat. Tom seemed to take to Aunt Al straight away. He came out of the shrubbery in the garden and wrapped himself round her thin burrs at legs and made his steam engine noise. <laughs> and Aunt Al scratched the roots of his ears. So you can't come indoors, she said. Meow, said Tom. Only if you have a mouse in the house, Daddy say, said Sophie. Which is highly unlikely, I suppose, said Aunt Al. The very next day was one of those lovely, mild, early spring days full of promise that Grandma likes very much. And in the afternoon, Aunt Al and Sophie were walking round the garden together. Sophie was carrying the yellow bucket in which she collected fresh creatures for her flocks and herds to replace those who decided to leave. They came to the potting shed and there was Tom crouching low. Oh, he's caught something, Aunt Al said. And sure enough, there was a mouse between his four paws, perhaps the same fat mouse that Sophie had found eating Christmas cake that time, if you remember. It was alive and though bedraggled, apparently unharmed, but every time it tried to crawl away, Tom raked it back. There's Tom with the mouse. You see it? Poor mouse, Sophie cried. Leave it alone, Tom. But the black cat only growled at her. Can't see it, my, she knows, said Aunt Al. It's quite natural. He won't let you take it away from him. He will, said Sophie. I'll make him. And she moved towards me in the most determined manner, swinging her yellow bucket threateningly. There she is, see, swinging her bucket. With a cry that sounded remarkably like, yikes, Tom shot out of the shed. Oh, they can't just leave it here, said Sophie, looking at the mouse. So shocked that he was too afraid to move. Tom will come back. What shall we do, Aunt Al? Hang on a tick, said Aunt Al. Got an empty box somewhere. I've had that brilliant idea. Thus it was later that Sophie and her mother and her great great aunt were having tea in the kitchen when Aunt Al suddenly said, What was that? What was what? said Sophie's mother. I thought I heard a little scratching noise. I said there was a mouse somewhere in the room. There are no mice in this house, said Sophie's mother. I can tell you that for sure. I'm certain I heard it, said Aunt Al. Listen, there it is again. It's over in the corner, Sophie said. Somewhere by that old cardboard box. Sophie's mother got up from the table and went over to the box and lifted the lid. Then she shut it again very quickly. Oh, she cried, it is a mouse. Oh, I don't like mice. Sophie, take it out into the garden this minute. When Sophie had done as she was told, she plodded back into the kitchen. Mummy, she said. I told you what Daddy said, didn't I? What? If ever anyone sees a mouse in this house, he said, we'll think about having a cat. So when Daddy comes back from work, we can tell him we've seen a mouse, can't we? Sophie's mother looked at them both. 
the five-year-old and the 81-year-old. Their faces were expressionless, but hers broke into a big smile. You wicked cheeky pair, she said. And that's how Sophie was able to persuade everybody who lived in her house that Tom could become a house cat and a member of their family. And we'll find out a little bit more about how Tom settles in in our chapter in the book tomorrow. So for now, Grandma will say be good, be careful and bye bye. Love you lots.